Hi, David. How's it going? Very well. Glad to be back. Yeah, but it's good to see you. Um, so uh, in the next um, three um, casts, we're going to consider um, or you're going to explain um, about the classification of the three main three types of viruses, which are RNA viruses, DNA viruses, and retroviruses. Um, so in this first one, we, you're going to talk about um, RNA viruses. That's right. So one of the points here is that viruses are at least as diverse in their lifestyles as any other life form. And the other point is that the viruses have played a critical role in the evolution of life and they actually reflect origin of life uh, scenarios. And so understanding all the different varieties of, of viruses really will, uh, I think, open people's understanding of the nature of viruses and their role in, uh, in life. So I'm going to start off with the RNA viruses. So the RNA viruses, as I mentioned before, are likely to reflect the earliest forms of life. And, but they've adapted now to using the cellular milieu in order to propagate themselves. So let's think about uh, the RNA viruses. And we discussed them uh, in the last lecture a little bit, but I'm going to review uh, for going to review for now um, some things I already spoke about. Oh, the first type of RNA virus that we're going to discuss is the positive uh, single-stranded RNA viruses. What do I mean by that? Well, single-stranded is they have one. RNA molecule that is not when it's in the virus particle um, in a complex with another RNA molecule. It is just by itself. And we're going to call it positive strand because this RNA that's present in the virus particle isn't just the genetic material of the virus. It is also the RNA that interacts with the cellular ribosomes and is translated into the viral proteins. So this is a very important molecule. And in the simplest types of viruses, this molecule is what gets into a cell and then it interacts with ribosomes inside the cell. And um, so this will now be bound here, and it'll be translated into viral proteins, okay? So um, one of the important things to recognize in this process is that it can interact with this ribosome, but it can interact with multiple ribosomes. So for this one message, it can be used to produce a large number of protein copies, okay? So, but why is that, that necessary? Well, what we, the major goal that we want to achieve early on is to produce more of this genetic material, right? That's the purpose of a virus. It's the purpose of any life form is to produce more of its uh, nucleic acid, to transfer its nucleic acid to future uh, living entities. So in order to do this, what it's going to do is make the proteins and the protein in particular that it's, we're interested in is a polymerase or a replicase. And it's called in this particular case an RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So it's going to make a new molecule, a new uh, new RNA molecule. And that molecule is going to be complementary to the positive strand. It's called positive because it has the coding information. This is the complement. It is not a copy per se. It is a complement. This is a template for making this. 
all right? But what you can think of this, now that we've made it, we've got the protein, we've made this, we can make multiple copies from this template. So we have an amplification step. And of course, as I said, we can have more than one of these proteins, so we can uh, continue to do this. This same protein or a, a modified form of this protein um, can then take these things and use them as templates for making more of this. And so this is, this is the, we're making positive strands. This is the genome, the genetic material that's going to eventually get into a virus particle. But each one of these can now be translated by those ribosomes into more virus protein. So what you can see is that each step, we're getting an amplification of, uh, of what we need in order to propagate uh, the virus. And so, that, so we're getting, so these will produce the viral proteins, not, but as, as there's a temporal shift that occurs with time, as these accumulate, the virus starts to produce those proteins that it needs to generate the virus particle. The, are you talking about the, the protein coat? That's right, the protein coat. Ah, and so if it's an envelope protein, the proteins that are in the, in the viral envelope. So there's a, there's a temporal shift in the nature of the proteins that are being produced. And once we accumulate these, we start to produce the proteins that will make the protein coat and allow the, the, the viral structures to assemble and for it to leave uh, the cell. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you just um, just two or three clarificatory questions. Yes. First of all, so um, is there a is there a is there a focus um, for the um, for, for for the manufacture of, of the negative strand initially uh, before or, or as soon as you have a negative strand that negative strand is then producing more positive strand or does it kind of produce a lot of negative strand first? So that's a great question, and it depends upon the virus. So I'm, whenever I'm talking about these things, I'm trying to be general. Uh, there are going to be variations in the case of individual viruses. But as a general principle, we're going to be making many, um, each, at each step, we're going to be making many of these before we shift to making these. So there is, it turns out I said it's the same molecule that is involved in replication, but there may be components, uh, additional components or modifications to the components that cause a switch of what's called template specificity from these to, to these that occurs with time. Okay. So it's mostly at initial stage. I mean, and, and as I mentioned before, this is an extremely hardworking RNA. Right. It's been translated into proteins. It has to, you know, interact with multiple ribosomes, translate with the proteins, and then it has to serve as a template for all this. It's a, this single molecule of RNA has to perform all of those uh, functions. Two points that you that you bring up uh, that are related to what you brought up is first is we are temporarily going to have a double-stranded RNA molecule. Right. So as I said. The genetic material starts off as a single strand in this particular virus, and then temporarily we generate a double-stranded RNA. In general, long double-stranded RNAs are uh, diagnostic of the presence of a viral infection, and cells have mechanisms for recognizing those particular types of molecules, double-stranded RNA uh, molecules. So, and that induces a, an immune response. So viruses have techniques to overcome that, to try to hide this um, from being exposed uh, to the cell. So they try to hide it. They also have mechanisms to try to defeat the immune response that occurs. So they try to prevent the immune response. And if the immune response is occurring, they have mechanisms to try to prevent it from, from being effective. So. The, one of the things that you brought up is that 
This will occur in a particular uh, location in the, in the cell. These, these, these events will tend to be localized in a, a, uh, a secure location so that uh, the immune response uh, can't recognize it uh, as readily. And those locations are frequently associated with a membrane surface. Uh, and so this, this process is at least partially sequestered uh, from, the, uh, from the cell. So that's an important point. Uh, the other important point is that this, you know, that's, that's true for this, it's also true for this, right? We have, so that has to be, uh, that has to be sequestered uh, as well. And then we have all these RNA genomes and we want to translate them into proteins, but we also want to incorporate them into new viral particles. And once again, that frequently will occur at some particular site, frequently associated with a membrane. Uh, so to make that, that, that concentration of the materials, the genomes, the proteins, in a particular locale, uh, that'll make the process a lot more efficient. Now, as I've mentioned before, there are enveloped viruses and non-enveloped viruses. Non-enveloped viruses just have the, nucleic, cap, the nucleo, nucleic acid and a capsid, a coat, Envelope viruses have, in addition, a membrane, the components of which they've acquired from the cell, and they have proteins uh, in that membrane. For a virus uh, that it just has the protein coat, in general, the way it leaves the cell is by lacing the cell, cause it, causing the cell to burst. Now, obviously, you don't want that to happen too early in the process of the viral infection. So there's once again a temporal organization. It's not until we've accumulated a lot of the positive strands and we've accumulated the proteins that are necessary to assemble uh, the virus and the particles until we've actually made those particles that then that, that lysis step, the, the, the bursting of the cell, which is promoted by viral proteins, um, is allowed to occur. So there's a, a temporal regulation. So it's all, you know, viruses have evolved all of these very clever strategies in order to be able to propagate themselves.